welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where we are going to go through questions 10 and 11. So we've got some differentiation and then we're going to look at some area in question 11. Before I get started, you know what I'm going to say. Please click that like and subscribe button. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. Right, let's get started with question 10. So a cement silo made of steel consists of a cylinder with height H and radius R, makes a lot of sense, and a cone at the bottom of the cylinder's base. The total surface area of the cement silo is given by the following formula. A equals 48 pi over R plus three pi R squared, where R is the radius of the cylinder in meters. The silo is designed such that the total cost for the steel used is minimized, we will talk about that in part B. This is the same as minimizing the total surface area of the silo. All right, first of all, we need to find the derivative of the function given, dA by dr. So this is a good chance to show the differentiation skills you've learned on your course. So we are going to write dA by dr. Now, before I differentiate this, one thing you should always try and do is write your function in terms of index notation. So in this case, we can rewrite the first part here as 48 pi r to the power of minus one. Remember, if we have say one over two, this would be the same as two to the power of minus one. So one over r is the same as r to the power of minus one. And you'll see why this is useful when we come to differentiate. So I like to write the function like this first and then differentiate. So to do dA by dr, what we do is we take our index, we bring it to the back. So we get minus one times 48 pi. Remember pi is just a number. And we reduce the index by one. So we're gonna get r to the power of minus two. Likewise here, we do this separately. So we take the two in the index, we bring it to the back, remember we times by anything there, so two times three pi, and then we're gonna reduce the index by one. This will then become r to the power of one. And now we just need to tidy this up and make sure it looks as it needs to for the exam. So minus one times 48 gives you minus 48 pi r to the minus two plus six pi r. And we are done. You'll see the mark scheme. They also get this to write this as minus 48 pi over r squared. That's perfectly fine, of course, as well. Okay, three marks in the bag. Right, and now we're going to look at part B. It's to calculate the value of r that minimizes the total surface area of the silo. And this is where being on the applications course really comes into its own. The traditional way of doing this would be to take the answer we got in the first part, part A, make it equal to zero, because we're looking for a turning point, and then solve for R. Now, of course, you can do it this way as well, even with the help of your GDC, and work out the value of R. However, what I would recommend here is take the original function, okay, and actually put the graph into your graphical calculator and find the minimum point. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so I've typed the function into my graphical calculator here. Um, just one thing to realize here, instead of using r as our variable, with the calculator, you need to put x where you would put r instead. And notice everything else is written as is from my formula. So also keep into account, you may need to put a times between the 48 and pi. And in order to get this graph and get one that looks like this, what I did, I went to menu, zoom and zoom fit this is a really important button on your calculator and it gives you a graph to work with so what we're going to do now is find the minimum point it's kind of a clue in the question we're looking to minimize the function so we click on menu we click analyze graph we click minimum and we're looking for the positive because we're working only with positive values when we're working with a real life problem so we click before the minimum point which is around here somewhere 
we click afterwards and you'll see that we want to read off the so-called x value which is our r which is going to be the number two so our answer is r is equal to two centimeters and in fact the y value actually gives us the uh, area actually needed to, in order to minimize it so it's kind of useful if you need a part c question for this particular question so this is the easiest way um, I would also draw a sketch if you're in your exam to show the examiner what you did there which is we essentially drew our function with something like this can't remember exactly but then this would be then the uh, x-coordinate and then we're going to read that off as our answer again this exam is really designed for using your GDC so please use it it will save, to, it will save you a lot of time in the exam Okay, and question 11. So on we go. If you want to check out the mark scheme from before, then here it is here, and here it is here. Perfect. So the diagram below shows a triangular backyard ABC. A dog is on a leash, classic question, attached to a pole at point A, and the length of the leash is 10 meters. And you're given all the information in the question from the diagram. And the first thing we need to do is work out the area of the backyard that the dog cannot reach, which the examiner has done very kindly for us and shaded in this area. So we're going to look for that particular area. This is a standard process. So the first thing that we're going to do is work out the area of the entire triangle. And when I write this in the exam, I usually use sort of image to show and work out the area of the triangle. And the formula for this comes from your formula sheet which is half a b sine c. So half times a times b times the sine of the angle in the middle. So we just use the values we have in the question. So we've got 23, we've got 10, we've got 50. We're gonna pop those into our formula. So make sure you write this in the exam so you can guarantee those method marks like so, times sine, 50 and I'm going to go over to my GDC and work out the answer. Okay, so I've typed this into my GDC. I've got the answer of 88.0951. A couple of things to recognize here. Make sure this is in degrees, not in radians. Otherwise you'll get the incorrect answer. And I got the sine function here by going to the button called trig and clicking and clicking the sine button like so. So my first task is that I've worked out the area of the triangle, which is 88.0951. I'm going to write that down just now. One, I'm gonna put dot, dot, dot. Okay, and now at this point, I'm going to work out the area of the sector. So I'm gonna write area of the sector. A little sketch just to show you what I'm drawing here and so this formula is also on your formula sheet so it's the angle so we'll call that theta divided by 360 times pi times the radius squared in this case our angle is 50 degrees and our radius is 10 meters it's this part here it tells you in the question as well so we pop that in 50 over 360 times pi times 10 squared. And I'm going to go over to my GDC and type that in. Okay, so I get the answer of 43.6332. So I'm just going to write that over here. 43.6332. To show my working there's a four mark question and in order to work out this shaded area we take the area of the sector away from the area of the triangle so our final answer will be the 88.0951 minus 43.6332 and we're gonna use the calculator again to work this out. Okay, as you can see, the answer is 44.4619. You'll be expected to round to three significant figures. So in all the calculations here, I've used four decimal places to give myself 
plenty of room to avoid a rounding error. So now I'm going to write down my answer of 44.5. And we just need to make sure the units are correct here. So 44.5, and we're working in meters, so we need to put meters squared. And I always put for the examiner what I'm rounding to. Okay, we've got our answer of 44.5 square meters. Okay, and for part B, we want to work out the percentage error compared to the estimate that the owner of the old dog used, which is 50 square meters. Now this comes directly from the formula sheet again. So we want to do VA, so the approximate value minus the exact value, okay, divided by the exact value. You'll see this on your formula sheet. You want to take whatever the positive version of this is and then times 100. So in this case, we are going to put in the estimate, which is 50, the exact value, which is 44.5, over the exact value, which is 44.5, and then we're going to times by 100. So again, I'm going to go over to my GDC and type it all in. Okay, so I've got this decimal value, which is the 50 minus 44.5 divided by 44.5. At this stage, all I do is times this by 100 to give myself a percentage. You can see you can use the answer part times 100, giving you the correct answer of 12.3596, which you will see here. So I'm going to round that to three significant figures. So that's going to be 12.4%, as you just saw there in the answers. So we'll write 12.4% and that's again going to be 23SF like so. I'll quickly show you the answers to this. You can see the working is very very similar to what I did here and the percentage formula giving you the correct answer there. Right, that's these two questions completed. We're getting towards the end of the paper, so stay tuned for another video and we'll get to the end of this paper and then start looking at paper two. All right, bye-bye for now.